Subterra Mundus is a giant hidden cave system populated by prehistoric flora and fauna. It is lit by an unknown gaseous element that replicates days and nights in tandem with the tides on the surface. Entrances all around the world have allowed animals from the Mesozoic and Cenozoic to find their way into this hidden world. Once there, they diversified into new families and species. While dinosaurs ruled the lands, the skies were ruled by their cousins, the pterosaurs. Pterosaurs first came to Subterra Mundus in the second great influx, around 100 million years ago. It appears influxes happened both in South America and Africa. Notable members of these areas during the time were Tabijarids, Phalacidromids, Tenochasmatoids and basal asdarkoids. Tenochasmatids were a family of small wetland dwelling pterosaurs with small sharp teeth. Most of them were filter feeders similar to birds like spoonbills and flamingos. Some genera such as Gnevosaurus, Mogonopterus and Ardeodactylus appear to have fed on fish. Most Tenochasmatids that made it to Subterramundus have continued to fill wetland niches to the modern day. The modern filter feeding Tenochasmatids of Subterramundus are known as Cetodons due to their densely packed filtering teeth. Their dental anatomy is very similar to those of extinct filter feeders like Pterodaustro and Balenognavis, although this resemblance is due to convergent evolution. While most of their body is covered in black and white feathers, most species do not commonly appear that way. As they filter algae and tiny crustaceans from the water, the pigments from their food seep into their feathers, staining them red like the feathers of flamingos and certain spoonbills. Most pseudodonts are quite small, with an average wingspan of just one meter. These are the more common species, as they do not require particularly large feeding areas. In areas where shallow water is more expansive, however, some species are able to support much larger body sizes. The largest pseudodont is Phenicodactylus, a large genus with a mouth full of baleen-like teeth and a wingspan of up to 6 meters in large males. Phenicodactylus is the largest and most widespread of the cetodons. This genus is highly nomadic, flying from one stretch of shallow marshland to another in large flocks to skim millions of tiny crustaceans and algae from the water. Phenicodactyls seek out these wide stretches of shallow water not only to feed, but also to reproduce. Males, which are distinguished by their large keratinous crest and the broad feather ruffs on their jaws, will try to attract and mate with as many females as possible. They start by claiming a small hill on which to show off their size and display features to potential mates. Dominant males will fiercely defend their space from other males which may try to steal their females. Some younger males, which haven't grown their crests yet, may try to mate with dominant males' females by blending into the crowd. Many females will also mate with other dominant males to ensure genetic diversity for the young. Female Phenicodactylus are highly attentive to their flaplings. Being highly social, pseudodonts do not need to produce particularly large clutches of eggs. Each female will lay about six eggs in a nest of mosses and other vegetation and take special care of the hatchlings. Although they can fly almost as soon as they hatch, Cedodont flaplings stay with their mothers for several months 
before either joining the flock or moving out to find a new one. Before their teeth come in and they can feed themselves, the flaplings are fed with a regurgitated slurry of half-digested brine shrimp and algae from their mother. This pseudo-crop milk is rich in the essential nutrients that the young require. While males do not contribute much to actual parenting, they do provide passive and active protection to both their mates and their young. While their teeth are too delicate to be used defensively, loud hissing and violent wing flapping can be used to intimidate and deter smaller predators. Additionally, cedodonts can use their clawed wings to swipe at small predators like snakes and lizards. Despite their generally small sizes and limited diversity, the cedodont tenochasmatids are highly successful in their filter feeding niches. One family of tenochasmatids has evolved along a different path from their filter feeding relatives. Gavialipteryx is a genus of fish eating pterosaurs similar in appearance to Boreopterus or Genuinopterus. Rather than being packed into a dense comb, the teeth are large and interlocking, ideal for snatching aquatic prey. These can also deal serious damage to potential predators. Gavialipteryx's feeding strategy is quite unusual for a pterosaur. Rather than snatching up fish from above while standing in the water like a heron or a neospinosaur, Gavialipteryx pursues fish underwater like an otter or a plesiosaur. This allows the pterosaur to hunt even in wide, deep lakes where stork-like species cannot stand. Like the puffins or gannets of the surface, Gavialipteryx is a very capable swimmer as well as an accomplished flyer. With powerful flaps of its long wings, it can chase small fish and other aquatic vertebrates underwater at remarkable speed. Webbed feet aid in steering during submerged chases, ideal for catching fast prey or evading predators like crocodiles, large fish, and neospinosaurs. Unlike all other subterramundian pterosaurs, Gavialipteryx is capable of launching out of the water into immediate flight. Short, dense, oily pycnofibers prevent water from weighing it down as it transitions from aquatic to aerial flying. The largest species of Gavialipteryx, G. sucodens, has a wingspan of up to 8 meters, making it easily the largest tenochasmatid in Subterramundus. At its great size, this species can tackle medium to large fish such as certain coelacanths, sarcodonts, and large gar. It is also fond of small frogs, snakes, and mammals that can be found in the Subterramundian swamps. Although they are technically solitary, female and, and adolescent Gavialipteryx tolerate one another's presence. Adult males, on the other hand, violently defend their personal space and fiercely fight for optimal fishing spots. They will use their sharp teeth to snap at any intruders in their territory. When it becomes time to mate, males become even more aggressive and lash out against other species as well. To show his suitability, a male will claim a spot of firm ground where passing females can easily see him. When a potential mate wanders by, he will show off his patent wings and walk about, swinging his head around to show off the bright colors on his crests. Unlike the Cedodonts, Gavialipteryx do not care for their young. As they receive no parental care, juveniles stick together for mutual safety. Gavialipterid flaplings often congregate in large numbers for protection. 
Such groups are often found near waterfalls or near wetland caves. Some venture into surrounding forests where they feed on insects and small reptiles before venturing back into the subterramundian swamps. Not all the Tenochasmatids of Subterramundus have continued the filter feeding or fish eating lifestyle of their ancestors and modern relatives. Nanopterans are a family of small terrestrial Tenochasmatids that feed on insects and occasionally really small fish. These pterosaurs are among the very smallest of Subterramundus. The largest have a wingspan of only 40 centimeters. These little pterosaurs now fill niches similar to those of extinct aneric naphids. As the nanopterans have long, toothy snouts, however, their feeding method is slightly different. Thanks to an extremely fast reaction time, nanopterans are able to snatch large insects from branches or straight out of the air, even in mid-flight. This makes them highly proficient in controlling insect populations. Their rapid reaction time also helps in evading predators, being able to fly and process information faster than most predators makes them extremely difficult to catch. But even so, these pterosaurs are still preyed upon by all manner of small carnivores, including large arachnids and even some insects. Because of this, nanopterans have an unusually high reproductive rate. While each individual clutch isn't particularly large, usually consisting of about 5 or 6 eggs, a female can lay up to 10 clutches over a period of several weeks. When all of these young hatch, they can form swarms hundreds of thousands strong, making these by far the most numerous pterosaurs in Subterramundus. Swarms of nanopteran younglings can be found in caves and near cliffs, where they are usually safe from large predators. Nanopterans are most abundant in forests and swamps, where insects can form enormous swarms. Juveniles and smaller species also take advantage of large dinosaurs with parasites for an easy snack. Removing parasites from megafauna not only helps the host, but also provides the pterosaur with protection as well as food. By sticking to generalist insectivore niches, these little pterosaurs are able to eke out a living in this harsh world. Tenochasmatids are just some of the many different types of pterosaur that live in Subterramundus. While most don't fill many significant niches, they are still important and highly successful members of their respective habitats. Thanks for watching! This video is only part one of a four part series focused on the Subterramundian pterosaurs. The next video will cover the Asdarkoids. As usual, special thanks to everyone who helped me with ideas for creature design or behavior. Your help is deeply appreciated. Stay tuned for more pterosaurs. See you in the next one.